ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to bajaj electrical limited q4 and fy24 earning conference call hosted by ambed capital as a reminder all participant line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr dhruv jain from ambed capital thank you and over to you sir thank you hello everyone welcome to bajaj electricals 4q fy24 earnings call to the management right today we have with us mr anush potar managing director and chief executive officer and mr ec prasad chief financial officer of the company thank you and over to you sir for your opening remarks thank you dhruv good afternoon everyone this is anush potar i would like to start by acknowledging that we would have had we would have liked to have had a better quarter than we ended up having that said i'll just call out some of the uh, challenges and some of what's gone well for us in terms of challenges our consumer products business has faced the, has faced the impact of uh, weak demand particularly in kitchen appliances so appliances have pulled us down as well as general trade we witness weakness in demand i would also say that part of that is due to the fact that our dependence and contribution from rural markets as well as our dependence on non premium segments is much higher than competition what is working well and continues to work well for us is our growth in alternate channels across all the sub segments there we've had double digit growth we have seen growth in the fans business our coolers business and mofi richards also in the last couple of quarters we've been witnessing growth in our sales there our lighting business i would believe continues to do well while you see a certain contraction in the revenues that's largely because of led price erosion in consumer lighting and in the case of professional lighting the base effect was high last year q4 we had a high base that said to me overall performance in lighting business is satisfactory and our margins there are actually continuing to strengthen and therefore you see the ebit performance in the lighting business is good the underlying trends in the lighting business in this quarter have also been good and therefore we are confident about the year ahead as well uh, what stands out for us in this quarter is despite the pressures on the profitability on cash flow working capital balance sheet we've done extremely well we added cash flow from operations or rather generated cash flow from operations of about 147 crores in this quarter demonstrating our intent to maintain a healthy grip on the operational part of uh, the business here uh, i'll just call out the two main drivers or drags on our cp margin performance one is the discounting that both competition industry and we had to resort to particularly in a weak demand situation and this is partly accentuated in our case because as you know we've been churning out our product portfolio from phasing out old products into new products a uh, fair amount of the old products because they're getting phased out have been uh, heavily discounted by us and the second area which we hope to solve as we go forward is logistics that we've spoken about in the past that remains a bit of a drag for us uh, and that is continuing to impact our operation performance but we are working to address that the last point i'll make you know while this is a q4 numbers i'll call out that april has turned out much better we witnessed growth top line growth in in april both for our consumer business as well as lighting business uh, fingers crossed but clearly q1 looks much better than q4 has been with that i'll hand it back to ambit thank you we can start the q and a okay sir thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Natasha Jain from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. 
Thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is on the consumer product segment. Now your presentation mentioned growth in fans. Now assuming at least 60% of your top line in CP comes from fans, yet we saw operating deleverage play out. So firstly, I want to understand if you can tell us the volume growth in premium and non-premium fans and also the value-wise split between premium and non-premium. Second related question is, were we able to take any price hike? And also, if you can, you know, throw a little more light as to how massive channel discounting has been despite pickup in growth, both at industry and bajaj level. So this is my first question on the CP side. Sir, we are not able to hear you. Well, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Natasha, I'll try and answer your questions. Let me know if I missed anything out. So, firstly, fans for us as Bajaj has not been you know, above 50, or I think you mentioned 60%. Fans for us is in the 40% uh, contribution range. So, we remain largely an appliance-driven company. In terms of volume growth, premium, non-premium, both have been in the single digits. Uh, that said, our non-premium has grown faster this quarter. So, our share of non-premium which is everything excluding premium, is about 70% uh, because of higher growth in the non-premium for us this quarter. Uh, in terms of price increase, like I called out in the opening comments, rather than price increase, I think we've been impacted by a fair amount of discounting in order to, you know, given the demand situation. So we've not had a price increase in Q4, but we've taken a price increase effective 16th May, so that comes into play later this week. Understood. So my second question is on the lighting side. So uh, your presentation mentioned that there there was a bit margin improvement mainly on the back of gross margin improvement. So on that two questions, first, can you give a split between your consumer and professional lighting? And also if you can quantify, you know, volume growth between the two and if we were able to take price hikes in the PS. And is that a reason why a bit margin flow has taken place? So, Natasha, CL is uh, consumer lighting is about 35%. Professional lighting is about uh, 65%. We've not had a volume growth in CL, so the you know the decline that you're seeing in revenues pretty much approximates the price erosion. The volume is being relatively flat. In PL, in professional lighting, quite honestly, we don't look at it in volume terms because given the nature of products and services, solutions business also, so their volumes don't have a direct bearing. So, but were, were there price hikes? I mean, can you, is that applicable in this segment or how should we read the cross margin improvement? I'll, I'll answer differently. Firstly, if you see an industry commentary also that, you know, you've had a fair amount of LED price erosion in consumer lighting through all of this year. So, there haven't been price hikes rather than the, there's been a downward pressure in pricing. That, sense, that said, my sense is sometime in Q1, as soon as May or June, you should see the price bottom out because... A lot of the price erosion is coming because of DOB technology that is already now stabilized. So I don't see any further price erosion because of that. So price, prices should flatten out. And going forward, volumes of normal growth should come back into consumer lighting also, both for us and for industry. And, sir, I have a couple of more questions. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rahul Gajare from Hightong Securities. Please go ahead. We have been disconnected from Mr. Gajare. Next question is from the line of Praveen Shahai from PL India. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, my question is related to the consumer product segment. Uh, as you have mentioned that the fan and the movie resort has given a good can you some Give some more color on the fan growth. How is that single digit, double digit of growth? How you had a seen? Uh, I can understand that 70% contribution is a non premium but how is uh, the growth part in both the segments? So, Praveen, your voice is not very clear, but I'll answer what I heard. So, our growth for fans for us has been in the single digits, both in premium and the non premium segment. Mind you, only part I will add is that we've had some more launches towards the absolute end of the quarter. So, some of that pickup is happening. It happened in the last 15 days of March, but also now happening in April. The one example I'll mention there is a small motor BLDC fan. That was a segment we were absent in, 
That is something we launched towards the end of the quarter, and we continue to do well in that April in April. So I'm confident that our growth and fans during this year will pick up further. And there is a no price uh, uh, hike so far. So price hikes now are coming to force from 16th May. So we've rolled that out in the announcement, and from 16th May. How is the market research growth? Morphe Richards is high single digits. I think it's the second or third quarter in a row that we are back to growth in Morphe Richards. And that is happening both on, you know, volumes, but also expansion of portfolio in Morphe Richards. Uh, lastly, sir, can you give a A&P spend for a quarter and a year? 3%. Both the year and the quarter is at 3%. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'll come in with you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anirudh Agarwal from Value Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Anuj, the first question was on the appliances business, right? So appliances for us continues to be fairly weak. Uh, obviously, the industry context is what it is. But you mentioned that April you have seen growth in the consumer business. Is that uh, also, are we also seeing some sort of revival in appliances now on this base? Or is it largely still led by fans? So, I know the appliance also call out. It's kitchen appliances that has been dragging us down through last year as well as in Q4. In, you know, in fact, coolers grew in Q4 also. Coolers by the time of Q1 actually we pretty much stocked out. That's true for most of the leading top four brands and coolers have stocked out. That's a level of demand. We got back some supplies from May, but in general, coolers are in short supply, so that continues to grow. The growth that we're seeing in uh, Q1 is led by fans, coolers to the extent stocks are available, and some, I wouldn't say bounce back in kitchen appliances, but at least the downfall is slightly arrested over there. Yeah. Understood. And uh, continue, sorry, to add to that, Morphe continues to do well in Q1 April so far also. Right. Right. Got it. And on uh, gross margins, uh, Anuj, I mean, obviously, I mean, there is some extent of ex uh, additional discounting. Any quantification of this? I mean, on a normalized basis, assuming that, you know, you would not have to resort to this additional discounting, uh, let's say whenever, you know, overall macros improve uh, from here, what is the sort of gross margin that the business can deliver in, in that uh, context? So, Anirudh, I'm a little, uh, what should I say, apprehensive of giving that number, but I will still give it to you to tell you, let you understand the level of, you know, uh, a discounting impact to the facing. So it's almost through various means the discounting is as high as six percent, uh, five to six percent across different product categories that is happening. Now how much of that can be pulled back when? I that part I wouldn't want to hazard a guess. But some of that is what we're pulling back. So the sixteenth May that we've spoken about is I think six percent is very high. We are willing to take a now we look at how we drive that. I think that is hurting our margins. And I'm not sure the demand elasticity is that uh, high in this, we will take a bet that we will take a price hike and, in fact, hopefully not have an adverse volume impact on that. But not all of the 6% can be rolled back right now. Right. Uh, and this 6% would be largely primary eh? or, or a mix of primary and secondary? How would that be? So for me, so firstly, direct impact to me. So 6% is impact on me. But the way that those discounts are seen the structure, some of it is contingent on secondary sales or secondary volumes, but I'm talking about impact on us, so therefore financially it's the full impact on us. Got it, got it. Uh, last question from me was on uh, overall expenses, right? So both on employee cost this quarter, we've seen a reduction. So uh, what sort of run rate should we consider for employee cost going ahead? And on the other expenses front, you know, what sort of elasticity do you see on other expenses? I mean, this year, despite top-line degrowth, other expenses have remained, you know, fairly elevated. But in a scenario where top-line starts growing meaningfully, uh, hopefully that is soon, uh, what sort of elasticity would you see on other expenses? How much operating leverage would we get in that case? So, I know, first, in employee costs, uh, you're seeing a little correction this quarter because of two up of certain provisions. We had higher provisions that we chewed up a little bit. Also, particularly because of variables and incentives, given the performance, we had an opportunity to look at that. That said, I think you have a Q4 figure this year and Q4 figure of last year in the employee cost in the investor debt. I think from a future extrapolation, it will be somewhere between these two figures. Okay, We will remain optimal on employee cost. 
our annual salary hike comes into play in July, that's when you'll see a normalized inflationary impact on employee costs. But we are continuing to focus with our digitization effect on uh, remaining a lean, uh, lean company, lean team. On other expenses, I think both ways we are kind of fixed. So this is the level of other expenses that we think we would operate at, which means as our uh, you know, volumes or value of sales grows, that should translate to operating leverage for us. We don't see other expenses going up in the variable sense. Uh, got it. Perfect. Uh, final question, Anuj. So, you know, versus the plan that you had laid out, uh, you know, some time back, uh, any structural changes or anything that you would want to revisit uh, as as part of that plan? Uh, uh, I don't know what you're alluding to, but two or three things that I see that should you know add to Delta to us. Consumer lighting is where I think we are very early stages. I am confident that this year we will see good growth in consumer lighting. Uh, number two, logistics remains something quite. I will accept that we've not improved fast enough. I wanted to see improvement by now in logistics costs. I think we may be a few months away from that. Just recently, given this, we reviewed. We may bring in some other external consulting intervention logistics because we want to see improvement in that much faster. I think there's at least two to two and a half percentage sitting just in logistics. So to me, the three levers of performance that should drive improvement in the coming year, one is consumer lighting. Secondly, logistics, once we start getting that right. Uh, and third is operating leverage in the consumer products business itself. In the operating leverage, I would include Reversal of some of this discounting. Understood. Understood. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rahul Gajare from Hightong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Anush. Sorry, I got disconnected last time. Uh, hello? Hi, Rahul. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. yeah hi. So, you know, there is always uh, a strategy where one would either go for growth or one would go for margin. Uh, you know, you did indicate that 40% of your business approximately is about fans. So, how much is the growth that you've done in the fans business in this particular quarter? Can you spell that out? So, in terms of growth, we've grown in single digit in fans. Uh, and like I said, it's about 40 plus percent is a contribution of fans to our total uh, revenues in uh -huh. CP. Uh, I don't you know, know because the sum of our fan launches were slightly delayed, so it's come in in March. So we've seen the benefit continue into April also. Like an example we've shown in the deck also, small motor BLDC fan, etc. So as, you know, this has been part of the narrative we've had, as Bajaj continues to upgrade or fill in the white spaces in our fans portfolio, including a premium fan, BLDC, now the small motor, decorative fans, etc. That is continuing to add. Uh, and we'll continue to see growth in that. The second piece I'll call out there, we've got some reference to it is the next. Next, we continue to launch uh, new fans. We continue to see pickup in the run rate of next. We've got more expansion happening in terms of offline stores. If you go, you'll start seeing visibility of next fans in the stores, offline trade also. We've got more direct dealers and distributors appointed for next. And you should see a pickup this year also for online sales of next. So I think between next fans overall and Bajaj premium fans, FI25 should see faster growth for us. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you were to choose between growth and margin, which direction are you likely to go for? You know, because in this particular quarter we've seen, in fact, even through the year, that we've actually got uh, hurt on both growth and margin. Um, just Because, you know, if there is a lot of discounting, typically at least the growth number should have been much higher than what it has come through. So I agree with you, Rahul. That's a fair question. I think, you know, we didn't try to choose one or the other. You know, hindsight, it looks like, you know, this is how it's transpired. If you just, and one thing we track is a two-year, we've got a two-year graph on our margins and decline margins. And everybody's dropped margins. I think our, if you not just, don't take it at a quarter level, but if you look at an annualized basis, our margin decline has been slightly better than some of competition. That said, I think we've been, you know, this discounting has not helped us adequately in terms of growth. So now we're really looking at that, which is why I'm calling out this price hike from 16th May. We will now try and see if we take a price hike, maybe we won't see a adverse impact on volume. So that's the current thinking. We will try and flip it around the other way. Okay, now that uh, uh, one of the reasons for, uh, you know, lower profitability has been new product launches. So are we done broadly with all the product launches that we had to, or there is still more uh, 
gaps to be filled? No, there's a lot more. So I would say the next two years will continue to see. We've always said that. Right now, you're seeing enough. You know, you're starting to see all the new products that we've spoken about. But it's not a one-time exercise. It's a two-three exercise. We'll continue to see that over the next two years. I don't think that we. That does not mean it will be adverse over the next two years. That simply means as you get to a tipping point over the next 12-18 months, our pricing power will improve. So right now, we are only seeing the cost side of that, but not seeing the gains of that. So in the next 12-18 months, you should start seeing the gains of that in terms of us being able to price ourselves upwards. Okay. Um, I think uh, that's pretty much uh, that I have got. Thank you very much and all the very best. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manoj Gori from Equirus Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is, if you look at over the last three, four years, we have been taking many initiatives, and probably we have revisited some of the strategies like product launches, uh, logistic. Uh, uh, we revisited the Morphe research. So probably where are we placed? Uh, how long will it take to probably finalize strategies on most of the categories, and when should we expect the uh, to see some benefit. If any color, probably it would be very difficult to give a specific number, but any color that would be helpful. So Manoj, good question. I will put it this way. I think strategically we are very much not just on plan, but doing well. It's operationally or executional wise that you know we've not uh, fully on pace with what we wanted. When I say strategically, or in terms of the brand architecture, how the brands that we spoke about, new product launches, and the features of the new products that we've been showcasing, as well as with design. If you go out, do channel checks, et cetera, you will hear positive feedback on that. So I think that is important. For us, where that is coming through in a measurable way, though we don't publish that, is brand scores. Our brand is significantly improved over the last two, three years across product categories and across the you know, brands that we have. Similarly, on quality metrics, we've seen significant improvement. And when I say this, it's all measurable metrics that we are tracking on quality. Uh, so in terms of product, new product launches, product and brand strategically, we are doing well. Uh, on Morphe Richards, it's taken us some time, but the last two, three quarters, we're starting to see the traction on Morphe Richards also, both in terms of category expansion and revenue growth. Operationally or execution-wise, where I'm saying we've been slightly weaker and not delivered to what we aspired for, has been particularly aspects around logistics, and logistics come inventory and, you know, making sure the right product is available, the right part of geography. I think that is where we've been behind the curve. I won't go back into history of the Mendra logistics, experience and subsequent to that when we've taken it in-house last year. We have not managed to improvise it the way we wanted. That said, like I said in the opening comments, we are revisiting that. We might bring in an external intervention of a consultant to get that right this year if we have not managed to get that right on its own. So that to me remains a one point which we need to solve for in redress because I think not just logistics as a cost, but its impact on uh, sales boost is also to us very important. Right, sir. So secondly, if you look at uh, from March onwards, we have started seeing some positive growth momentum. So is it broad-based, rural versus urban, premium versus non-premium, or probably any light on that? So I'll just call it out saying, uh, you know, we've seen growth in April, I've told you. you know, it's after many months that we've seen sales growth. Uh, in fact, it's almost it's at a very early double-digit growth. But I don't want to extrapolate that for the full quarter, but the fact that even in a month we've got a you know, double-digit growth, that's positive news from our perspective. Uh, given our contribution and mix from rural ex sector, while we've not cut that because there's always a, a margin of error in that, but it has happened because it's both across rural as well as urban and across, therefore, price points here. So I'll just leave it at that right now. Right, sir. The last question on kitchen appliances. Obviously, we have gone through a very tough time uh, at, a, at the industry level over the last few quarters. Do you see things probably have bottomed out? Probably further decline should not be visible for the industry and for Bajaj in specific? I would put it this way, Manoj, that you know, if I have to pick between kitchen appliances, fans, coolers, even water heaters for coming segment, I would think fans, coolers, water heaters will be my growth drivers more than kitchen appliances would be, at least for the next couple of quarters. That said, this festive is what I'm banking on. You know, kitchen appliances have been subdued for a while. So by festive, hopefully, kitchen appliances should also come up and, you know, pick up pace. But, 
Thanks. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Manoj. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. Next question is from the line of Natasha Jain from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity again. So, uh, my question is: now you mentioned in your PPT that uh, GT channel decreases by three percent. Versus all other channels, grew by strong double digit, and yet we saw a top line uh, compressed of eight percent. Now, can you tell me what is the revenue contribution from different channels, and also what is the rural versus urban mix? So, Natasha, firstly, you know you're right in the math. So that's why the three percent other the double digit. The reason it doesn't add up to it is because at channel level we. You know, track and get gross sales data. The overall we're reporting from accounting at net sales, so that's why it causes a certain discrepancy. Uh, number two, in terms of uh, our contribution, so GT is at about 62 percent, which means the balance adds up adds up to about 38 percent here. And in terms of rural urban, that part we don't publish here. Understood. Thank you. 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 Thank and want to ask questions next question is from the line of manoj gori from equiris capital please go ahead so one uh, one question which i miss probably on the epa side uh, uh, like any cost that we recognize during the quarter and probably how should we look at uh, in the coming years probably what should be the calculation uh, and and probably uh, as a percentage of sales or probably as a percentage of volumes how should we look at yeah cost for the current year was about 9 crores and we expect it to be about 12 crores next year and sir uh, uh, some of the competitors have also highlighted like they that would be passed on so should it be assumed that industry would be passing it on especially when you look at the uh, price hikes have been very difficult so my view on that manoj is i mean you pass on or not is on a holistic basis not a line wise thing i do think as an industry we are guilty of not having passed on overall costs whether it was star rating impact on fans or overall commodity impact or the cpi cumulatively we not passed on adequately to uh the market i think i believe that's a defensive strategy we should have and you know in our individual case we you know we prefer to pass it on but have to match competition uh but now we've taken a call at least like i said from me we will now take a reverse situation and try and pass on more cost there thank you thank you sir thank you next question is from the line of hardik rawat from iifl securities please go ahead thanks for the opportunity my questions are broadly answered just wanted to understand one thing uh, you've mentioned that you're planning the board has approved uh, a proposal to raise up to 500 crores uh, through ncds just wanted to understand what uh, what what this uh, raise would be for so that's an enabling resolution that we have taken so that if some opportunities comes up for an inorganic uh, sort of a you know deal then we have uh, you know the money in place so not nothing planned as of now but that's just uh, enabling resolution all right thank you thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question next question is from the line of amit kumar and determine invest investment please go ahead Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, this one question. I mean, I just want to. I'm just sort of trying to reconcile, uh, you know, the broad macro data with, you know, what is happening in the industry, uh, right? So last year uh, we had almost, uh, in fact, even better than uh, you know expected. So expectation was six seven percent. We are definitely ending up with uh, you know seven percent plus, actually closer to seven and a half percent kind of GDP growth. Uh, right i mean this is a category uh, uh, you know which is still not uh, i mean you know whether it is kitchen appliances or uh, uh, the, uh, you know uh, uh, 
other appliances, so to speak, uh, you know, it's a category which is not sort of, uh, you know, fully penetrated. Uh, there's so much of opportunity in, uh, you know, rural areas and, uh, you know, bottom of the pyramid, uh, you know, population as well. And then we are looking at a situation where at the industry level, uh, you know, I mean, growth has been, uh, you know, so disappointing, uh, you know, last year. So we've, we've seen that in a few other consumer categories also, FMCG, etc., at the beginning of the year. But, uh, you know, in the fag end of the year, uh, FMCG seems to have, uh, you know, recovered. So in sense, I mean, you know, what is really going on? I mean, there is obviously then, uh, you know, that uh, unorganized to organized, uh, you know, shift opportunity, uh, you know, also available, you know, smaller regional brands, uh, you know, sort of shifting to a Bajaj or, uh, you know, some of the other uh, brands and then premiumization. This is, uh, I mean, the, the whole of last year has been pretty disappointing, uh, you know, from a macro perspective and from a demand perspective, uh, you know, itself. Uh, especially in light of, uh, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, GDP growth numbers that we are seeing, basically. Uh, so just, I mean, is, do you have any thoughts on what is going on really here? So Amit, uh, you know, this is a question better for some economists. You know, we are lay people here. That said, I'll give you a certain couple of pointers or hints to where to look at this. If you look at the Q3 GDP data, it was about 8%. The number correct, 8.2 something. But the private expenditure growth, consumption expenditure growth in that was about 3 or percent. So delta of, you know, almost 5% was a historical high delta between GDP growth and private consumption expenditure, which is not usually, you probably have a couple of percentage points gap between these two. So what that also shows is, you know, a lot of the GDP currently is being driven by infra or capex rather than actually consumer expenditure and consumption. That's point one. Point two, reasons for this, or let me, before that, I, you know, to your point on, it seems to be a broad trend across consumption sectors, not just our sector, but also FMCG. I kind of agree with you. Uh, in that, you know, I, while you said Q4, FMCG has shown growth. I think it's very early stages, not been very strong growth. I won't call out the legal company names. But there is some positive commentary on that in FMCG, including a couple of weeks ago what Nielsen mentioned. And maybe Q1 you will see some growth in FMCG, including rural bounce back as well. You know, I would be very happy to see that because I think us as FMEG or FMCD typically have a lag of one to two quarters from FMCG. So once that happens, we would hopefully follow suit on that. And only the third point that I would point you towards is keep watching interest rates and inflation. As that cools off, particularly interest rates cools off, I think that should be a big trigger for uh, consumption expenditure to come back. I think that's something holding people back right now. And sorry, just one fourth point on slip in is uh, the government, I would like to believe, is cognizant of this. Uh, there's enough chatter. There was some chatter around this year's vote on account in Fed, but since that was just a vote of, uh, of account, uh, maybe in the July budget they will take some planned intervention to boost consumer sentiment. I think there are easy ways and means to do that without impacting fiscal deficit. But, I mean, there is, there is no sort of specific driver for the uh, for this segment, which is the appliances and durable sort of segment, uh, which is, uh, you know, sort of keeping things uh, so muted. Nothing that you No, no, nothing negative to the segment. I think it's a proxy or marker of overall consumption, you know, sentiment right now. And I do remain bullish. That will turn around. And for whatever it's worth, like I've told in April, we've seen growth. Maybe part of that is with a good monsoon outlook. You know, maybe, uh, you know, demand that's been subdued for a while. At some point, low base effect will kick in. So statistically, many of these things will play out. But directionally, I think we should not be too far out from, you know, uh, consumption expenditure coming back into play in one form or the other. Just on the other point that I mentioned that right now GDP is being driven by infra and capex cycles, that also has finally has to percolate down to consumption expenditure. That usually has a lag. So if normal case consumption expenditure expenditure doesn't pick up, then this infra capex percolation down to people's hands and spending back, that automatically will also come into play. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Dhruv Jain from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. 
But I had a question on the CAPEX, right? So you've done about 130-odd crores of CAPEX in FI24. Uh, just wanted to understand what's the kind of direction in terms of CAPEX intensity should we look at it uh, from FI25 and FI26 perspective. Any specific categories uh, that you're looking to invest a lot more on from an in-house capability perspective? Yeah, so Dhruv, uh, uh, most of these CAPEX were leading to the, the new products uh, that we invested on, especially in, in form form of the tools and molds, etc. And as Sanuj mentioned, this would continue for another two years, so you can expect a similar sort of a CapEx levels for the next uh, two years. And if you could just add to that, Drew, one second, in terms of capacity, otherwise, you know, we're not looking at some big bang large-scale factories, but our capacity across most of our products, our fans, our mixers, water heaters, lighting has continued to increase over these last couple of years. That's two smaller CapEx interventions that we're continually making. Okay. And uh, just had a question on the new products, right? So you've been driving this new product initiative for some time now. So uh, if you could just throw some light on, you know, as a percentage of sales, uh, what would be the contribution and the neat direction that we should think about it? And if you could just say that, you know, if you could just give, give some data around margins, uh, what could be the kind of margin differential between these two? So, Drew, I'm sorry, we don't disclose our contribution from, you know, a new product development. That said, obviously, we track it internally. So, that has had a steady state growth over the last two years. We used to do that as part of our own board meeting also today. But it's not data that we publish here. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Praveen Sahai from PL India. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the follow-up. Uh, sir, can you give uh, uh, the CAPEX number for this financial year? And also, uh, as you are explaining about the plant uh, expansion, uh, can you give some color on the in-house manufacturing uh, contribution right now and the way forward? So, uh, the CAPEX spend for the year is 124 crores, and uh, the in-house manufacturing is about 20%. So, uh, 124 crores for FY20? Four. Four, yeah. And how is the uh, plan for? This year will be similar levels. It will be in the range of uh, about 150 odd crores. Similar levels. Okay. And uh, so next, uh, next this year will be similar level. Okay. And uh, uh, the in house, as you mentioned, at 20%, is there any material change you are expecting in the coming uh, couple of years? So I'll give you an indication the last two years has grown from 17 to 19 to 20. I think this year should go up to 22 or 23. So that's the kind of incremental that is continuing to happen. But what's happening is qualitatively, there's more high-end stuff that's been coming in and the lower-end commoditizing is being getting pushed out there. And second part I'll add to that, you know, all of this tool molds that we talk about, that CapEx is not restricted to our plant. So that is where we have greater control over uh, a lot of that is placed at the third-party manufacturers also. Okay, okay, because, uh, you know, earlier, uh, if I remember, you had a guided for a 25% or to reach 525, and that will also improve your some, uh, you know, bit of a margin profile as well. So that's why uh, just a, a query on the in-house, how this 20% to go forward. So, I would, again, I'd comment, and I don't remember what exactly you might have heard me say in the past, but I've always said we don't have a target number. That might be where we end up with, but that's not a goal by itself. Uh, but the quality of that is important. So what we do in-house and what we do outside, that is important. Secondly, the ROE or ROCE is important to us rather than just the pure EBIT margin. So to, if you connect what I said earlier also, we are also investing in the quality of manufacturing and our control on the production cycle at third-party manufacturers. So increasingly, all the tools, molds, dyes, etc., third-party manufacturers, are also increasingly owned by us. So to us, they are not really, you know, white label services, but it's our contract manufacturing and our IP, our product, our control over the production and quality over there. So to us, that is how we're looking at manufacturing. Okay, great, sir. And also, if you can give some uh, numbers on the how is the distributor uh, count has increased uh, by end of FY24. Sorry, Praveen, can you repeat? I didn't hear this. So, uh, distributor count, uh, how is uh, that uh, 
uh, at the end of F opportunity in right now. 749. Yes. Okay. So to give you a hint, last year in March 23, it was 660. This year, March 24, we exited at 749. Right. Sir. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask questions. <laughs> A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you. Well, I'll just thank everyone once again for attending this. Uh, I'll reiterate what we said. We've had a mixed quarter. We'd have liked it to have been better. We've had some shortcomings, particularly on the CP business led by appliances and general trade, but at the same time, there are other positives in terms of a lighting business, alternate channels, coolers, uh, and some growth in fans and morphe rituals also. Uh, April has started off better for us. We remain positive for the year ahead. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Ambed Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>